Ladies and gentlemen, I am here live at GBPC 2018 Global Blockchain Policy Conference here today and have invited Ms. Sandra Rowe, the CEO of Global Blockchain Business Council. Welcome. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. So, digging into the interview, I'd like to first start with the you know, concept, blockchain. From your perspective, in your own definition, how should blockchain technology be used and what's its ideal use case for applicability? Yeah. So usually the confusion around blockchain is what can it do? And actually, because it's a core infrastructure technology mm -hmm. that could power lots of different sectors and applications, um, the reality is, is that just like TCP IP, most people don't understand how that works. Mm -hmm. Blockchain itself is a bedrock technology that will help run and record transactions and record data and allow for the sharing of that data uh, over many different applications. So mm -hmm. it will be pervasive across industries, sectors, governments, and lots of different applications. But then, from your perspective, what's your priority? My priority, as I spend my time, as I was a former banker, and I was at CME Group where we launched the Bitcoin Futures products, um, and I'm now switched to really focusing on education in the blockchain space. We spend our time at the Global Blockchain Business Council working with governments, regulators, big uh, enterprises and their executives mm -hmm. on what blockchain can do for them and whether blockchain actually is the applicable technology or if it's something else. Mm -hmm. um, we still find around the world there is a lot of education that needs to happen. So we focus on education, partnerships, advocacy. Ultimately, how do we help the business of blockchain mm -hmm. to, to grow? You, like you said, you were a former banker, right? Yeah. And there's been a lot of saying. I'm, I'm pretty sure you've experienced the boom and the bust of the financial market. And there's been saying that the cryptocurrency market is going, following the same trend. Do you believe that the cryptocurrency market itself, will the bubble of it will in, indeed pop and you know the investors will suffer? So um, I've been in the markets for a long time. I've been in the foreign exchange markets. Markets go up, markets go down. That's what markets do. I think the crypto space, interestingly enough, Bitcoin's been around for 10 years. It's already had major uh, peaks and troughs. And the crypto sort of bear market that everyone's talking about in 2018, it absolutely has gone down. Um, but it needed to because there was an incredible, uh, stupendous rise in 2017 of these, mainly because I think it triggered the attention of mainstream mm -hmm. and people started going into it without really doing their homework around what it was. and. Uh, why it is that they should be going into it and mm -hmm. I think this sobriety period is actually very good. Um, people need to, uh, I think, focus on building and understanding what works and what doesn't work mm -hmm. and so I think we'll end up in a better place. Um, has it popped? We'll see. I mean there may be another up and down but at the end of the day it depends on whether you're a trader, mm -hmm. are you a speculator or are you an investor? Uh, for, for the long haul. Mm -hmm. And my view is, whatever you are, this is a tech that actually needs a little bit of understanding around what the purpose is of each of these tokens or, or coins, and um, people should do their own homework, um, as well as also soft, safeguarding against um, people who are actually scamming in the market, which is definitely happening today. The price of Bitcoin is currently pending around $6,000, $8,000. Do you believe that's an um, adequate rate or value of the asset? So I don't usually make commentary on where Bitcoin <laughs> trades. Um, I think that's always a very dangerous thing to do. Of course. But I think for anyone who is actually interested in Bitcoin, they should um, do some analysis around break-even levels because the incentives that are in place in this network for Bitcoin in particular, it is actually important to know what the fundamentals are. Mm -hmm. So Bitcoin is based on mining and miners actually have to invest in the energy costs as well as the cost to actually mine with the equipment. And there is a break-even level. Um, some people would argue that the break-even level is something like five, six thousand dollars. Um, go ahead, do your own research to figure that out. But the point being is that even if Bitcoin prices were to drop, some people would argue that because of the mining sort of um, costs that the price actually has a floor. Now, whether that's true or not, my view is do your own homework. Your investment in Bitcoin needs to be from either you're a speculator or you're an investor in the long term. Mm -hmm. I've held Bitcoin for a very long time. I have no intention of selling. Yes, I've bought a few things here and there to test the actual network. But the reality is I actually believe in the long term viability of it. That's my own personal view. Um, but that's also because I've spent the last six years looking at 
this tech and, and actually being quite enamored with what it solves for, which originally was a double spend problem, and the ability to move around value across this network. It's pretty amazing. And so for me, um, my view is yes, the Bitcoin price is a hot topic, people love to talk about it, but at the end of the day, um, I would say to people, you know, what are your reasons for why you're interested in it and do your own homework. So you were part of a former um, C CM, oh my crap, CBE, right? CME. CME, yes. my bad, my bad. Chicago Mercantile Exchange, <laughs> yes. And everyone in the crypto space is questioning about the pending decision on the ETF of Bitcoin. What's your perspective on it? What's your take on that? Look, there are a number of ETFs that are in application right now. At the end of the day, um, the SEC has a hard decision to make because if they approve one, they'll probably have to approve a whole bunch of them, and then after that will be Ether and all the other potential um, yes. coins that come after that. So it does set a precedent. Um, access in a regulated form is something obviously that's high demand from what I hear in the market of what people would like access to, but mm -hmm. whether the SEC is going to move quickly or not, that's you know, <laughs> in their corner to, to, to deal with. But when you look at the applications, and I think this is where devil is in the details, you've got to look at whether they actually satisfy the requirements of non-price manipulation or non-susceptibility to price manipulation, liquidity factors, um, their ability to be monitored in a way that would uh, prevent price manipulation. Because those are some of the tenets of why products are regulated under our CFTC in the futures world and SEC in the ETF world, for example. Um, and I think each of these applications probably has their pros and cons. And um, frankly, I think people are waiting. Um, we'll see. So, moving on to the actual topic of today, government yes. policies. Yes. Korea has recently put out a ban on ICOs. Well, let's just summarize it that way, but um, do you believe that the Korean government is moving towards the right direction, or are you seeing future potentials? So, we have met with several um, party members, actually, sorry, so officials from several different parties. Mm -hmm. My understanding is this is the first bipartisan gathering yes. um, in the blockchain space, which is, I think, very important because typically, I guess, politicians don't always agree on things, and if they can come together on a topic across three different parties, it's mm -hmm. a good thing. I've been heartened to hear the messaging um, and, and some of the Congress people pushing through legislation, hopefully, for the National Assembly to adopt. Mm -hmm. But um, Korea is at an inflection point. Uh, it has always led and been innovative uh, in technology, but I guess for various reasons in the blockchain space, it is... Um, Take and pause, I think, mm -hmm. and um, even though I think people are trying to separate ICOs from crypto, from blockchain, at the end of the day, uh, you need to actually have a view on all, and if you leave uncertainty out there or you ban something completely, it will go elsewhere. And unfortunately, that's what the Korea has been seeing in the last number of months, is a flight of their brains, their talent, and their effectively their money going out to other countries. So when it comes to crypto, I'm really bullish on the application itself. I believe that the crypto will you know, eventually build a world where people transact peer-to-peer transact -peer, you know, with electronic cash. However, from the perspective of the government, once a person or a merchant makes income via cryptocurrency, it could be difficult to tax the income or maybe the whole process itself. So what's your perspective on that? I would challenge that. Oh, really? I actually think crypto and blockchain is a friend to government and mm -hmm. not a foe. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I say that is because if you were to have an efficient system that could have direct payment, you could also overlay a smart contract that could have a taxation piece, mm -hmm. which would automatically mean mm -hmm. that you would get taxes for every transaction that you do, and it could be recorded properly so that you could have it built in auditing and, re and record keeping. Mm -hmm. um, in many ways, I find that uh, you could look at it negatively, but there's actually positive applications of the tech mm -hmm. to help government with better oversight, more data on pol better policy making, and actually tax revenue. Again, if I were to think about how you lay out something that's attractive to entrepreneurs, be clear. Markets and entrepreneurs do not like uncertainty. Mm -hmm. Business does not like uncertainty. So, so uncertainty around taxation, 
what are the rules around ICOs? What are the rules around opening a business in the blockchain space? Mm -hmm. How quickly can you open a bank account? These are all very fundamental and pretty easy to solve problems if there is the will to do that and provide clarity. So one of the interesting questions during the panel, your panel talk was, as a policymaker or someone who talks a lot to a policymaker, what is the biggest challenge that you face? That was the most interesting question, I guess, when I heard the panel talk. Sure. So what was your answer then? So I believe it's actually sometimes mindset and culture change. Um, it's really hard when you see lots of change and the easy thing to do is just to ignore it. Mm -hmm. I think the harder thing to do is actually try to get your head around, what is this thing? How does it impact the world or my citizens? Mm -hmm. And even further, how do I actually legislate to make sure that I am doing the right thing for the next generation of innovators and also my current citizen base. So GBBC is a global council, you know, working for the business of blockchain. What is the future for you? Will you keep working for the government or talking to the government to have, you know, to convey information, to convey knowledge and educate them so that this technology will eventually be adopted? So our mission is right now really focused on education. We're in over 40 countries going to many more. Um, there are 195, so we've got a lot of runway for us to continue with the education piece. At the end of the day, we will evolve as this technology evolves, and if that means later that it goes from education to application and something else, we will help out in that way. But at the end of the day, we are here to build bridges. This is a collaborative technology, which is one thing I love about it. Mm -hmm. It's a global community. It allows for different groups to talk to each other who never used to talk to each other. And I think this technology actually has the ability to bring people together if done in the right way. Hope to see the expansion of GBBC in the blockchain sphere, blockchain sphere in the future. Yes. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Appreciate it. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in. That was Miss Sandra Rowe, the CEO of GBBC. Thank you for watching.